Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Andrea and today I'd like to talk to you about indigenous authors. I have put off this video for a really long time because I felt like I wasn't well read enough in this topic. Um, however, I realized that it's probably best that I have a lot of books that I haven't read and that it's really nice to have these amazing authors to look forward to. So why today? Um, today is the summer solstice and as of 1996, today in Canada um, has been labeled as National Aboriginals Day or National um, Indigenous Peoples Day. And I will link down below so much information, reading lists, the history of all this, groups you can support, things you can donate to, um, anything to do with this topic aside from the books that I'll be mentioning today. So if you like more information, please check that out. When it comes to indigenous writing, I've noticed that there are three very dominant themes and one of them is pretty heavy. So the first one, which is the heavy one, is kind of using writing as a tool to heal from trauma. And the trauma specifically is kind of the abuse of the land, residential schools, and being completely marginalized. Um, so obviously this is a broad umbrella and there's a lot to say but it, it just these are the kinds of books that just feel heavy the second kind of writing uh, that i've encountered is legends folklore and myth they are things that are very much included in rites of passage and ceremonial things and traditions and kind of echoes from the ancestors it's so beautiful and it's very unique um, there are many stories including, you know, bears and shamans and um, transformation. And the last sort of element is nature writing, which you know I love. And nature writing written by indigenous people is very special. There's this kind of invisible bond that kind of leaps off the page. Um, and it ties so closely to ceremonies and traditions from the past and uh, this can often be tied to medicine as well so that said um i will talk to you about some of my favorite books that i've read and some that i found valuable so taking the residential school systems first the first book i would recommend is basil johnson's indian school days this is a semi-autobiographical and it's memoirs from being a 10 year old in the residential school system and kind of witnessing a lot of horror done to peers and um, it, there is this kind of veil of dry humor uh, kind of putting a distance between the writer and the audience because it is a very heavy topic but it's a very important book to read because it is non-fiction and this is very rare because most of the time books written about the residential schools are fictionalized. Either they are fictionalized because the person researched or the person who is at the center of the story is a, a grandmother or a grandfather or a parent instead of the person telling the story or it's fictionalized to kind of put a distance and take matters into one's own hands or to get the opportunity to write the story as you wish you could have experienced it. Um, there's a lot of reasons why, but a lot of residential school stories are fictionalized. So one of the most popular ones is Richard Wagamesi's Indian Horse. This is one of the few books that has been adapted into a film recently and in this story we have a boy who is in the system and he plays hockey and that's his kind of way to cope and it's his escape. Hockey is very dominant in this book. Again it deals with a lot of heavy topics. There's a lot of betrayal going on um, between the children and also people who find them and send them back to the schools. Um, there's a lot to be said about this book but I would highly recommend it. It's written by one of my favorite authors of all time and um, it is famous for a reason. Another one is Kiss of the Fur Queen by Thompson Highway. This is again a fictionalized account. This novel is about two boys who are ripped away from their families and their language is taken away from them as well as everything. They are named Jeremiah and Gabriel 
and they are forced into the system. Uh, at the schools, they are both sexually abused by priests, but um, they get a sort of visit or the trickster queen, fur queen, kind of guides them to become artists in their life. And you get to see them experience different coping mechanisms along the way. And it's very heavy and complicated. And again, there's like this veil of distance because it's just too serious of a topic. Another great novel to read about the residential schools is In Search of April Raintree. And the reason this is important is that it doesn't deal with the residential school systems head on. It's not a memoir, it's not a fictionalized account of someone going through the system. However, it looks at the next generation, which is very important because you get to see the sort of ripple effects when you tear children away from their families. You're not ruining just children's life and their parents. But the next generation is also affected, and the next, because it's, it's got a very huge impact on the community, on the language, on the stories. Um, you destroy everything, and this is, um, is a lot more feminist, and it deals with a lot more women's issues, and again, features a lot of sexual abuse. So, um, content warning. Moving slightly away from uh, the heavy topic, I would like to mention the book I Keep the Land Alive by Elizabeth Penachoué. Um, she is an Innu elder from Quebec, and I went to see her speak recently at the Toronto Public Library, and she talked a lot about her role as an elder in the community to keeping the stories going for newer and younger generations, and how she fought the government many times because they were using indigenous land in Quebec to kind of practice um, air jets from the military and it scared away a lot of the animals and as you know hunting is a very important tradition in indigenous people's culture so um, there was a lot of conflict there and she she fought this with her community and documented it all and wrote in her diary and then this book is kind of her diary and more information and also pictures taken looks at at more contemporary conflict um, another book that I would recommend is Solar Storms by Linda Hogan I had to read this for a course in undergrad and the main character kind of visits her hometown and realizes that this big corporation wants to start something on indigenous land and in fighting it she kind of learns a lot more about her traditions and um, it's kind of like discovering the traditions of her people as almost as, as an outsider as a person who who's coming to this anew and as a person who's not indigenous coming to this through this book um, I felt like I was learning a lot as well and you feel very close to her I'm going to move towards my favorite author and that is Richard Wagamess now I have a bunch of his books here um, I have not read Medicine Walk yet even though I started it last month um, I'm still in the middle of this but what I love about his writing is that he writes nonfiction meditation. And his writing is kind of like him reflecting on things while learning, which is honestly one of my favorite kind of writing because you get to feel connected to one person and you get to learn about their experiences. But I feel like it's as close as you can come to tell me what it's like to be you and not me. And he does it so, so well. And if you ever need to get out of a reading slump, I would strongly recommend his books because um, they make you reflect, but also they're very short. So one of the ones that's more famous is Embers. And Embers is just filled with Ojibwe meditations and um, it has pictures and little paragraphs of reflection, but every single thing in here is quotable. They're so well written and it's almost like you picture waking up in the morning with your coffee and seeing the sunrise and sitting with him and just enjoying everything and taking it all in and just 
thinking about stories and birds and, and just any possible thing. It's just wonderful. I have read this more than once. Um, again, very, very short. So easy to get through. Will get you out of a reading slump any day. Um, and then this was published after he died and it's called One Drum and it's kind of along the same lines as Embers. Um, then One Native Life is a biography as well as One Story, One Song. I have mentioned these as my as part of my favorite nonfiction of last year. Um, this is more of a book of essays and it's him reflecting on just random ideas but it's written from a perspective like in hindsight. Uh, when he gets older he overcomes a lot of things that he struggled with his whole life and he comes from a place of strength and also he extends help to other people less fortunate than him and he kind of learns not only from them but also from his experiences and then he'll tell you what he thinks of a particular topic so for example harmony is a topic and then he'll tell you what that means to him and what he's learned from his life from that uh, on that topic and there is his poetry book runaway dreams and what more can I say? It's very reflective, beautiful, and it's Richard Bolgamesi. I don't know. He's just wonderful. Now, he has a huge backlist of books that I do not own or have with me, but I would recommend you look him up and his works because there's a lot out there by him, and I don't think I've heard anyone speak poorly about his other works. But I'm, I'm hoping to eventually read his entire corpus. Now moving towards the sort of mythological middle ground kind of transformational stories that I was telling you about. Uh, there is this amazing book by Pantheon Books. They've been kind of anthologizing fairy tales and folk tales and legends from around the world. And this book is titled American Indian Myths and Legends and this has everything. It's collected all kinds of categories of folklore and mythology. So uh, to give you an overview, I'll just read the, the titles of some of the, the subcategories. So you have Tales of Human Creation, Tales of World Creation, Tales of the Sun, Moon and Stars, Monsters and Monster Slayers, War and the Warrior Code, Tales of Love and Lust, Trickster Tales, Stories of Animals and Other People, Ghosts in the Spirit World, and Visions of the End. Only Rocks and Mountains Last Forever. Then along the same lines, this is a book I'm currently reading actually, and it's Our Tellings. I found this at the used bookstore and I've never heard of this. Now I have also never heard of this particular uh, group of native people and I cannot pronounce this, so I'm going to try to put something on the screen or down below. But it's just called Our Tellings. And this is a collection of oral stories and then translated. So each story is told by a different person. And it's beautiful so far. It's divided in two sections, creation stories and non-creation stories as they put it. And animals play a very huge role. Um, especially the bear and the coyote, obviously. Um, really beautiful and cozy, and again, it just it has that legendary feel. So um, this could kind of go along hand in hand with this. Moving into the nature section, I'm going to make a brief stop at medicine. So the first person I would like to mention is Bear Heart, called The Wind Is My Mother. And Bear Heart is a shaman in the community. And in this book, he shares with you a lot of his practices and the way he goes about healing. And it's also his biography or autobiography. It's, it's a very different narrative than I've read before. It stood out as like a very unique text. Another one I would like to recommend is The Science of the Sacred by Nicole Redvers. She is a naturopath and in this book she mixes together like chemistry, physics and all kinds of sort of western world sciences and she blends it in with indigenous traditions and stories and beliefs. 
So what she'll do is she'll break things down to a, a point where you're like, yeah, that makes sense. I understand that. I've learned about this. And she's like, yes. And then this is what indigenous people say about it. And she'll connect the two and make like a little bridge between each topic. And once she breaks it down to pretty much atom level, because she does do that, um, then the gap doesn't seem so big anymore. You kind of start to see so many connections it comes from the angle of medicine and science and I found it so well written. It's relatively new. I would recommend this book if you're interested in looking at science from a different angle. And since we are on the bridge topic, I'm going to mention my favorite nonfiction writer, Robin Wall Kimmerer. I know, you expected this to come up. This is my favorite book of last year. I've done a full review on both of these books and I will link it up here and down below. How do I describe her? She is a botanist, um, studied biology and ecosystems from a very Western academic point of view. And then she incorporates in this book um, her traditions and the way she thinks about nature. And it's personal. It is scientific. It, it incorporates indigenous narratives and mythologies that apply to some of these um, things so well written uh, just the writing itself is uh, you can stand by itself without having the good content but this is a perfect book in my opinion and I will recommend it every day and this feels a lot more like a thesis and it's looking at all of the different kinds of moss both of these exist as an audiobook as well and it's read by her and I would recommend that as well because there's something in her voice that is also very calming. I would also like to show you three books that I have not read, but I own. So the first one is The Inconvenient Indian, A Curious Account of Native People in North America by Thomas King. I have not read Thomas King and Lee Miracle and Louis Erdrich. And a lot of people have recommended these three authors to me so many times. And I've even gone to one of his lectures and he's one of the funniest people ever. He has this like dry humor. Um, really love him as a person. But I have not read him. But I have this. It's on my immediate TBR. Just wanted to mention him because he's a huge name um, in the indigenous writing community. And he has to be here in this video. Another one is Lightfinder. I don't know what this book is about, but it is a YA book. Um, I'm just going to read to you the back. is a, a fantasy novel, YA. A young Cree woman who sets out into the wilderness with her grandmother, auntie, and two young men she barely knows. Uh, they have to find and rescue her runaway younger brother along the way. And I was told by the person who gifted me this that it is so well written and it, it has these kinds of elements of um, like spiritual writing or mythological writing and she said I will enjoy this and I believe her because she's also the person who recommended to me braiding sweetgrass so I, I really look forward to this one and then the last one is a, another YA book and this is heavily illustrated as well and it's called those who run in the sky and let me look at that cover so it says, after a strange and violent blizzard leaves young shaman in training, Pitu, stranded on the sea ice without his dog team or any weapons to defend himself, he soon realizes that he's no longer in the world that he once knew. The storm has carried him into the world of the spirits. And that sounds wonderful. I really look forward to reading this. So these are kind of like the three on my immediate TBR. I also have the following on my... TBR in the near future. I do not own them, however, so I'm gonna have to wait until quarantine is over. And the last book I'll recommend, and I'm only mentioning this at the end because technically the author is an indigenous woman from New Zealand, not from North America, but her book is one that I really enjoyed and it stayed with me. It is called The Boom People and it won the Booker Prize in 85. Even though I don't remember all of the details of this book, I do remember that there was an abusive relationship and a child, but the one standout to me was the use of 
the fairy tale of Rapunzel and how heavily that was kind of the subtext. There were a lot of fairy tale elements, that's what I remember, and I really enjoyed it. And it's due for a reread because clearly I cannot talk about it because I don't remember as much as I should. That said, I would like you to please recommend to me any books that you've read that you've really enjoyed, aside from the ones I've mentioned or put on, on the screen as my immediate TBR. I would really appreciate, especially if you have uh, some authors that are not as well known. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!